Okay, got it. All right, we're calling to order the EDC monthly meeting, uh, March 4th, 2023. Uh, the agenda is up on the screen. Um, I'm sorry? May 4th, thank you, Mary. May 4th, 2023. The agenda is up on the screen. We have additions or deletions, citizen comments. Uh, we've caught up now with the minutes, approval of the minutes from the last three meetings. Um, we have two new business uh, uh, discussions, both related to housing, three new applicants with five units of housing, which is great uh, from the housing program, and then some proposed changes to the rental incentive program. Um, in terms of old business, we promised last week, that last month, that we would simplify the analysis that we promised the town and the community that we would do about looking at tourism and the impacts of tourism, looking at infrastructure and uh, marketing and, and the interrelationship between all of those issues. Um, and some people who are unnamed, but who just joined the meeting said that, that the old plan made their head explode. And so hopefully this new plan will preserve the body parts, the body parts of all of the EDC members. Um, we have at least one working group update from the downtown revitalization group. Uh, and I don't know if there are any other initiatives. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Uh, I have one, which is just, just talk a little bit about membership uh, of the EDC. Any other items? Okay, um, I think the EDC members know, and now it's actually good that Mary is here, but I'll notify the select board formally, is that two of our members have stepped down. Um, one is Michael Malik, and one is Patrick Fultz. Um, both are, um, so Michael, neither is going to be here tonight. Michael is stepping down. He just doesn't, he, he's been serving for a very long time. I, maybe not as long as Joe, but. Oh, yes. But, but any, <laughs> is there anyone else who's served before longer than Michael? I haven't. Have you, Larry? No. I no. You. Yeah. So he's the second. Well, he, so he served for a long time. And, it, it, um, fe it, fe it feels like I've been here longer than him, but I'm not sure about the math. We'll have to ask Larry or Joe. <laughs> right. Um, so, uh, and I, I told him that we, well, I just, I said that I would say, even though he's not here, and I don't think he's going to come to subsequent meetings, but, you know, he's, I think really added a ton of value in terms of he's had a point of view that um, that I haven't always agreed with, although I often do. Um, but I think he's been concise. He kind of states his point. It's civil. Um, and I think he has moved the needle on a whole range of issues. He's gotten us, I think, to focus much more on events. I think he's gotten along with Joe has been the loudest voice in terms of thinking about the marketing program and what the effects of it are. And I think that has significantly well, really almost dominated to some extent our agenda this year for the rest of this year anyway. Um, so thank you to Michael. Uh, Patrick, um, yeah, I don't think he would mind my telling what why he surprisingly on a moment's notice uh, is stepping down. He decided, I guess, about a month ago to sell his business. I don't know how long he had been thinking about it, but sell Sleep Woodstock. And he put the Sleep Woodstock on the market on a Monday and closed on the sale the next day. Wow. I think he was expecting, as would be reasonable, Larry, I don't know when you had to sell your business here, how long it took, but I assume in most businesses and communities like this, it takes a year or two to sell, to sell a business. Wow. And I think so he wasn't planning on telling us anything. I mean, he's, he's moving, he's staying in Vermont, but he's moving out of Woodstock to Mendon. Mendon? Okay. Um, and he also has said that um, he will continue to support the marketing operations until, you know, we find the right people to take it over and so forth. And we've, he's got some ideas and we've got some ideas to, to, to do that. So we have two vacancies on the EDC um, that we will want to recruit new members for. Um, and Mary, is that sufficient to tell you that right now or should I send Joe and Doug a note or both? Is it sufficient for me just to inform you right now that we have the vacancies? Yeah, okay. Ray uh, here. No, Ray is not on as of now. Well, I'll, let's both tell them. Uh, just make sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, we always have, you know, people always ask me um, when they aren't selected or they haven't applied, you know, and I, 
you know, what, what's, when would the next opening be? So I say, we have openings every year. Right. Well, we really do. It's really quite regular. It, it, I think there are two patterns that people are, are surprised by, but I think they're pretty regular. One is the vacancies. Mm -hmm. And the other is the empty storefronts, <laughs> which, which is a very, very stable pattern. Yeah. It, it's just, we just don't like there to be any empty storefronts. I once, when someone had been complaining, went to New York and just on the blocks that I was on counted the number of empty storefronts yeah. versus that it's exactly the same proportion yeah. as Woodstock. Yeah. So we just want it to be full <laughs> and we want there to be nine members on the EDC most of the time. Anyway, so we have that change in membership. Yeah. Right. We have seven, there are nine appointments and seven members and, and Mary, maybe you can in, inform this. If we yeah. have, Sorry, if we have a vote tonight with seven people, actually we only have six in attendance. Mm -hmm. No. One, two, three, four, five. And there's two online. So, oh, sorry, Marion. Okay, I didn't see Marion. Oh, was Marion online? Seven, yeah. Marion and Tom. So if we have seven people here, yeah. but nine mm -hmm. positions, does it take four people or five people to be a majority? Three, seven, seven, number. It would um, the number of the people with um, not in people that are not um, uh, on the, in, well, is it five out of nine or four out of seven? Uh, it's five out of nine. It's five out of seven. Right. It's five. Yeah, okay. So and I was going to say, I was wondering if there was a way to make it so that we didn't have to have, we could have up to nine, but a minimum of X and whether that would get around that yeah. problem. Let me, let me, well, we, to be honest, I don't think, I don't remember, I only remember either one or zero votes no, I where know. this was an issue. Right. I, I agree. So I, we usually agree on everything anyway. Uh, right. Right, Todd? Number I agree with that. Uh, <laughs> I don't agree with that. Uh -huh, there you go. All right. So anyway, that was my update on membership. Um, if you have any suggestions, the select board makes the recommendations. We don't really play a role. But if you have any suggestions, um, certainly bring them forward. Just feel free to go to those people. Come to me and I can. And I am I have offered to. Yes. Sorry? You asked four people. All right. Um, Thank you. I, I just want to clarify. Um, so it doesn't matter whether we are, are even or, or odd. Like if we have eight people, it's okay because it still would take five votes. That's correct. Okay. Right. So it's not, it's not about the oddness. But we're we're obligated to fill the positions. We right. can't choose to not fill them. But if nobody comes, even if, if we only have one person. Uh, yes. No. No. I'm just. We I can't control it. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Are both vacancies active immediately, or is it? Yes. Active? No, they're both effective immediately. Okay. So. Mike Green, who interviewed at the same time as I did, I know had a very positive interview. Right. I assume he did. So I would, and I know he's still interested. So oh, do you mind speaking to him? That would I be great. I did earlier, and he said, great. Okay, terrific. So, yeah, I don't know. I can let you know so you can reach out to Nikki Norris again um, and make sure that she, I don't know if he needs to come in for another interview or. Yeah, that's interesting. Question. I don't know whether he would. Yeah. The, the um, yeah, I think, you know, we, uh, I've offered to meet with applicants and I offer, I suggest gently that they meet with me or they could meet with any of you before the interview so that they have some context and they can prepare a point of view about, you know, uh, it was helpful. I think that, you know, I think that the childcare is a terrible priority or is a great priority, or I think it should be whatever you happen to think. So John, I did, I pointed out to you, I think, um, just, for whatever it's worth that the two people that are going off or the two of the three people who actually have active downtown businesses. Um, so we're losing that except for Joe. Not quite downtown, but Woodstock business. Yeah. No, and so having, yeah, so having having other merchants, I mean, I, th I know that there's, uh, Patrick has suggested somebody from the inn and for many years we had somebody from the inn. So having that, you know, they're in a little bit of turmoil right now, but but do I do they have to so be often, a Woodstock you know. resident? They or, do need to be a Woodstock okay. resident, yes. Michael Green owns stock goods pop up space and used to house at the stock. Michael Green. He owns the stock goods pop up space, which is the barn that used to ho uh, host Abracadabra mm -hmm. coffee trucks. And now it's a pop up space, so they're doing 
um, extra Where does he live? Event. He lives um, in that home right next to the barn. So uh, 52 Pleasant. Yes, thank you. So he's sort of, he's a landlord to businesses in effect. <laughs> Oh, sorry. He's the that one. Is, he's the one who. He's the toilet. The toilet builder. The one of the toilet. What? East End Park right. toilet applicant with the uh, coffee folks. He came right. and met us two years ago. Not this year. The year before. Right. Yeah. But anyway, I Thanks, think Larry's point, though, which is I think is a good one, is it's. I think it's important to get the merchants engaged. You know, Joe is is indirectly but very closely related to. Um, you know, operation. He's pretty busy right. with it. Michael had a chiropractic practice, and Patrick had a hotel. So, hey, we're putting pavement on next month, the uh, parking lot. So one day, one day we'll have a, a desk and a chair and a and a coffee table in the Tassel store. So you just wait. <laughs> we'll all be merchants. All right. Um. Let's. So let's then move on to new business. Um. We have three applicants for five units for various different housing incentives. Trina or Jill, are you going to? Yes. Did, you, did we approve those minutes? Oh, something? sorry. Thank you. I'm oh, sorry. And I also didn't ask. Sorry. I, I just added something at the beginning. So let's, we're, sorry, uh, Trina, hold off one second. No, go ahead. C citizen comments. Are there any citizen comments? There's a few folks online. Antonio, go ahead. Oh, you're, you're muted. So. There. Is that better? Yes. Go ahead. Okay, I, I'm not sure that this is the right meeting to start this on, but I just wanted to ask if it's too late to submit applications for uh, assistance this year. Assistance in what area? Well, I'm think I'm trying to start a dog park in Woodstock. That's you, yay! <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Oh, that's, that's Deb. Give you some sense. Oh, Deb. Yeah. Okay, I, I haven't met Deb yet, but I've heard about your your uh, support. But yeah, um, anyway, I um yeah, I'm trying to s establish a dog park. I'm looking for a parcel of land. I've been talking with some people, and um, the, the the folks at the village and either the select board or the trustees all want to know what kind of money is involved in this. And I can't, they want to know about the cost of developing it, as I'm sure you would be if I were to apply for it. And, but I can't do it until I know how, how, how much fencing is needed, how many thousand feet of fencing and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So, so I'm, uh, before I know what, what to even, where to even start, I guess I wanted to find out if, um, if, if uh, the committee, your committee, would be uh, amenable to the idea of loaning us money to uh, to get it get it set up and to to help with some of the fees, and um, what I have to do when I when I apply, and is it too late to apply for uh, for grants for this year? Okay, um, I, that's a process question. Can I do? You... Yeah, you do the process. Oh, fine. So. Uh... The very short answer is no, it's not too late. Okay. But 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 just given what you said, there are a couple of things to be aware of, and we can talk further offline about this process. But okay. if you were to make if you were to make a request for what in our major grant program, which is not doesn't sound like mm -hmm. a small request at the beginning to get some funds to get some licenses, then mm -hmm. you can do that at any time of the year. Okay. If you were to make any any smaller request, it would require a two thirds vote of the EDC to consider it not at our January meeting. I okay. don't think, given just my personal opinion, I don't want to speak for the group, but I know there's been a fair bit of interest in dog parks, and I imagine if the grant were small, that two thirds of the EDC would would vote to consider it. We, you know, we actually we have to vote to approve it. I think is is what we said. So two thirds of us. Uh, which is six out of the current seven members I would need to consider that. Um, the last thing I'll say is in terms of a loan, we uh, don't currently have a loan program, although we are investigating trying to put one in place. Mm -hmm. uh, depending on the size of the grant, if it were quite small, I think it, it probably 
would be easiest to just give you a small grant. I mean, if we're talking about hundreds or a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars, if it's yeah. more than that, we might be able to consider a loan, even though we don't have a program. But it might take us a little bit longer. So those are the factors to consider. We can talk. Larry, do you disagree with with that last point? Okay, because Larry and I have worked on the loan program together, and it's not ready to be launched. But we have yeah. actually offered to make loans before without the program. So anyway, so I think the short answer is yes. Now we do the next round of grants will be done in January, which isn't that far away. But so that's sort of the range of options, and I'd be happy to talk to you about it offline. Okay. Yep. And, yep. And, and so I guess I just, I just call you directly. You can call me directly, or you can call anyone on the EDC too, if you'd like. Okay. So. Sorry. Antonia, you. I also have additional information for you um, that I talked to Connie about as well. Okay. Um, and one of the approaches that when we were first looking into this before you, you started on this, and thank you for spearheading it, was that it could fit within the town beautification, um, depending on the parcel of land, if it's village if it's around the village, it could be part of village beautification. And okay. that's a committee specifically uh, that it could be a grant uh, and a part of it. And given that we're already in May, <laughs> boy, um, and uh, I have some I have some information about costs for you as well from other okay. dog parks. Um, okay. it, it's gonna take several months for you to put it together or for us to put it together anyway. So it may end up being close to the, you know, regular time. of the year anyway but hey. i'd be happy to help and i'd love to give you all that information all right well i'll get in touch with you then awesome That's thank you idea. thank you uh, are there any other citizen comments mm -hmm. thank you all right hearing none now we'll move <laughs> the housing incentives uh trina do you want me to put up the uh no john we got to uh john we got to just approve the minutes don't we <laughs> yeah, thank you. Disapprove? I disapprove. I'm just Is there a motion? Motion to, motion to accept the minutes as presented. Is there a second? Second. second. Is there any discussion? Deborah has second. Is there any discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the minutes have passed. Thank you. I only forgot You're twice welcome. in three minutes. <laughs> all right, are we, should I say? We're moving on to Trina now, or have I forgotten? Yes. There's nothing else for me to forget. <laughs> Trina, go ahead. Yes. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hi, Trina. Uh, hello. So I wanted to start off with a recap of uh, where we are with the housing program so far. So prior to the meeting tonight, we currently have five rental units that are uh, signed up and in the program. Um, two of those are rent ready and already being rented, and three of those are ADUs that have work that uh, is currently in process and should have those rent ready uh, later on this year. So that's some exciting news. Um, and if we uh, approve the ones tonight, that'll bring our total to 10 units uh, in a year's time, which I, I think is pretty significant. Um, I think, it, yeah, it was May uh, last year that I, that I started working uh, with the housing group um, so we're really excited about that um, and the progress that's been made and just thank you to everybody who's been part of it. <laughs> okay, the first applicant we want to talk about tonight is Kathy Kowinski. She applied for the ADU Workforce Rental Program, a uh, three-year term, $10,000. Um, the property is located uh, over on 119 Westmont Way. And uh, when you're looking here at the house picture right here, the entr entrance to it is over to the right. And it's a nice size ADU, um, has a one bedroom also and a nice living space. And you can see there's, uh, she's been working to clear out some of the storage that has been down there. It's phase one of the project. So we can get a better idea of, of the work that needs to be done. Uh, primarily the work that needs to be done on the unit that we've uh, identified so far are uh, the windows need some framing. There's a small leak repair there in the in the bathroom. Uh, she has flooring that she wants to put down and then finishing out the ceiling and light fixtures and things like that to make it uh, uh, rent ready. <clears throat> um, she's already started clearing out. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole application, but it's no, no, I know. It's just yeah, yeah. 
<clears throat> excuse me. So she has submitted an application requesting uh, the $10,000 grant from the uh, EDC and in return will rent the unit for three years at the rental rates that we have approved for the programs. Do you have any, any questions? questions? No questions. I, I do. What? What's what's the um what's the rental rate for this one going for? Um, I can't remember. It's a one bedroom. I think is hold on. I gotta look at my notes. Is it less than fifteen hundred? Yeah, I think it's fifteen. I don't want to misquote. Hold on, one moment. See, is it in the application? The applic uh the one bedrooms rent for fifteen hundred dollars. Is what we're asking them to keep the rent at fifteen hundred or below. Great, it's great. It's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Any other questions? No, none here. Oh, Antonia has a question. Uh, go ahead, Antonia. Um, who assures that these units are meeting the proper codes with respect to safety? Ingress, egress, that sort of thing. Um, all of the folks that are in the program have to uh, get a visit from the safety fire inspector. They're reviewed. Uh, Dave Green will also come out and help them with any questions they have, but the state has to come out and they get a permit. Okay, so there is someone making sure that these apartments meet code. Correct. Yes, okay. we won't, that they... They won't be rented unless they have the permits. And we don't give them the incentive unless they do. Okay. Yeah. Very we good. also don't, we also, Trina also monitors, because we haven't had a lot of members of the community ask in EDC meetings yeah. about this. So I just want to take the opportunity. No, hey, Trina, ask Trina away. also monitors whether or not they are complying with the rent requirements and whether they are renting to someone in the local workforce. Right. And we, we only give them the incentive each year if they continue to comply with those requirements. Terrific. Good. Yes. Thank you, John. Any other questions? When, may I... Oh, sorry. There's a question here, Mary. Um, when I'll repeat the question. Right now. When um, they are um, the term of the rent, the term that... of the lease. What is the term? Is it? Is it? I think they, Trina. What is yeah. the term of the lease? So in exchange for the $10,000 grant to get it up to speed to be rented and compliant for renting with permits, et cetera, they have to rent it for three years. That could be a one-year lease rented to the same person for three years, so long as they still work in Woodstock as a qualified tenant, which is one of our requirements. It could be a two-year lease, it's up to them, but typically a landlord's rent for a year but she has to do it for three years. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay. All right, go ahead. Go ahead, Trina. Yeah. Oh, I thought somebody else had a question. I don't see any. Okay. I'm going to move on to the next one, or I don't know if you want to approve these as we go through them or... I think, I think it's think great it, to just, I think it's great if we all can agree just to look at them and then maybe do a batch if, if you guys all think it's a good idea. Yeah. Yep. It's kind of a chairman's comment to make, Todd. But I agree with you. I'm so trying to, I thought you might forget fine. that you were the chairman. I thought I'd try to sneak in there. I'm just, I'm just doing anything I can for a power play here, John. I, it's yeah. just a naked political move, but that's fine. I'm, I'm comfortable. <laughs> Go ahead, Trina. Well, okay. That's true. I, not so much naked, but in pajamas. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'll move on to Craig Olson's application. He's the second applicant uh, in the meeting tonight, and he applied for the multi-unit housing workforce rental program, which is new this year. It's one of the new programs where we're in, it's, it's basically the same as the ADU program, but we're incentivizing folks to build duplexes or triplex or a fourplex. Um, and in this case, uh, Craig Olson is interested in this, it would be $10,000 for each unit. Um, what he's wanting to do is to take this, uh, there's a red barn back here in the back, right above where the arrow is, John. If you wanna scroll down, you can, they can 
see the other picture. He's going to renovate this barn into three units. Um, each floor will have one unit, <clears throat> and there's going to be two two bedroom units and one one bedroom unit. And each of them, of course, would have one bath. Um, he's already had state septic design come out and take a look to make sure that uh, that's doable. And he's already received the state septic permit. Uh, and he's ready to move forward. Uh, he has a contractor lined up that's doing some work on his property. And he's working with Stephen Bauer uh, regarding all the permits. Um, and for those that are curious, the estimated cost of completion on his project is about $290,000. So he's requesting 30,000, that's 10,000 per unit uh, per the program, and he meets all elig eligibility uh, on paper. Trina, I do, I, I know we went over this, but is he also getting grants from the state? Like that 30, um, I don't know grants? offhand. He knows yeah. about the VHIP program. Yeah, he knows, okay. But I don't always, um, once someone, I, I recommend the VHIP program, but I can't be part of it because of confidentiality issues, right. um, okay. components. So, uh, but I tell everybody about VHIP because it's money right. on the it's table. Got it. Right. And the okay. only difference between that and our program is if you go for the state funds, you do have to rent it at lower rate rent amounts that are equivalent to HUD or affordable housing type oh, rent wow. amounts. Okay. And you have to do it for five years. So there's a difference. Um, and the state program also differs, differs if you're uh, building something from scratch or uh, converting something. There's some different nuances there. But he's he's fully aware. Anytime I can share that information, I do. But good question. Yeah. It's just such a great example of what can be done, you know. Oh, yeah. Red Barn Apartments. I love it. Awesome. Any questions here? In the room, any questions online? This, Larry, funds don't. No, I actually, have, I actually have a question about this. All right, hold yes. on one second, Todd. Larry, first. Then the, 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 just to, um, that looks like a almost from scratch project. I, I, we don't give out the funds until it's done, right? Trina, can you? I think I know the answer. The, the funds are doled out uh, based off milestones of the project, and the final payment is withheld. The final quarter of the payment, which would be, um, I, I can't do my math. 7,500. The so, final payment would not be provided until he has uh, leases in each of the units. Um, so we do hold out the final payment. But the others are submitted uh, as construction begins, different phases. They provide the expenses to me, the receipts, proof of payment. Um, I confirm the accuracy of that information, and then I submit it for reimbursement. So it's not just a big lump of cash payment all at once. It's well, as and ahead, can I add to that? So the reason for this, Larry, is that when uh, somebody involved in a project like this gets to a certain stage, they can get a construction loan, but there are many phases of the project for which they have to spend cash. Um, the design and some of those are the upfront stages like design. So we wanted to have the cash available to people, but before we before we give any money, we put a uh, we have some legal documents in place that are it's like a oh, lien yes. on the property, so we can claw the money back if they don't complete and meet all the requirements. The, the, my only reason for asking that is whether we have um, any vested interest in knowing whether the total budget, in this case, $290,000, is a feasible budget. And is, do we have any stake in that? It, it, let's say it's not, a, you know, if, if, if it's it not actually, feasible, like it's $400,000 and they can't afford to do it. Right, but presumably, if that's the case, I mean, Jill, correct me if I'm wrong, but our legal agreement presumably says that if you don't create three apartments, and rent them, you need to give us the money back. You give the money back. Is that correct? correct. I mean, yeah. yeah. So we yes. don't really care why you fail to complete. Okay. Fine. That's, that's now, right. the, the thing we're giving up here is we have to go get the money. The thing we're gaining is we 
and it's I, I, my view is just my personal view is it seems to be working is that we enable we remove a barrier at the very beginning of the process for people who can't otherwise start mm -hmm. and so that's the risk we're taking I just, seems I like just want to know what the relationship yeah. between what we're giving and and the feasibility of the yeah of the uh, you know the budget right Todd yeah, I mean, everyone knows I'm a huge fan of all of this. this. is a great example. With two things, one that just came out of Larry's point, and these aren't these aren't stoppers on me being happy with this particular proposal of this particular project. But one thing that comes up is the parking. And I just want to make sure that in projects like this, where it's new construction, that we make sure that they have the parking secured, and that that permitting and whatnot is been approved because that was a real thing at my store and it took me a year um and even if it's on your own property like on my farm we tried to add some parking and then they made us change the grade of the driveway and all this crazy stuff that was going to cost 150 grand so we didn't do it to convert our barn so it's just something that came up that they might have building permits but if they don't have the right parking they're not going to get the occupancy certificate they probably do just throwing it out in the universe but something larry just said fascinating are we making sure that when we can claw that money back if we have to because projects fail with all good intentions right um when i went to get my bank notes vermont has a real hard time getting back money from llc's in real estate so are we doing this with these personal or are we doing it with their llc's because as we know most properties probably like this one are in llc in our neck of the woods. Um, and I learned from Norm Frady's over at Mascoma that they've had real hard time collecting debts. Uh, so they just sort of stopped doing that um, and only going after, uh, go, only banking with people, even in the corp side of these types of uh, corporate projects. So um, this particular property, um, I've looked at the lister card, so I know it's, it's under their name. Um, so I don't think that would be an issue. And okay. we do have processes in place and agreement for default and for maintaining compliance throughout the program. And once you hit one of those spots, we'll do our best to work with you within our agreement guidelines. But if, if not, we also uh, have, uh, we've taken another step on this, Todd, where um, the signed agreements and the promissory notes that are, are, are e-signed, I go and I record those at the town hall. So they're linked to this property. Um, so we've pretty much done everything uh, that, you know, we've, we've talked to our attorney. Um, we've had it reviewed by an attorney. So I think we're in a good shape. I mean, of course, cool. there are some variables that could be thrown our way that we don't expect, but um, I don't, right now it's, I'm not, I, that's not a concern that we have in the program. Great. Awesome. I love this. Keep it and up. Then one thing, too, just on the parking. Parking seems to be like one of the primary things with permitting and everything. So it's it's one of the primary things I mention when I go for a site inspection and check things out. And I know, like, for example, in his specific situation, he's going to build a new driveway coming in on the other side of this barn. So it's going to be different than his driveway here for his home. Um, so he's got plans. I, you know, I, I want to spec out how much do you know about this and what information I could tell, uh, tell you up front to avoid any headaches down the road. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I think one of the byproducts of this being so successful with your group, um, and the work you're doing, Trina, is that you're definitely an expert more than any of us. And we really are so happy oh, that thanks, you're Todd. doing this work. Yeah, it's awesome. Thank you. Deborah. I I yeah. thrive in the details, so there you go. <laughs> Trina, speaking of details, way back when, when we were looking into and talking with a lawyer, one of the things, and this is to re also to reassure uh, Todd and the group, um, uh -huh. he what was the, what was the town that we were kind of emulating it after? Because because they were talking about how out of all the people that they've done this with, it's like it's barely ever happened that they had to go back. And oh, um, I think Montpelier wasn't it? Uh, was it Montpelier? Was it Montpelier? Mad River, the Mad River. Uh, I remember that meeting. Coalition, right? I believe. Where, yeah. where we were talking about that it really is about the community and that people aren't going to go back, you know, 
because it's coming from community, et cetera. So I just want to reassure that that's something that we've looked at or that you looked at as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, thanks for that. I think, you know, like we said, we do mimic that other program. So they've had it, and th but things change. We've already sent some things back to the attorney review again. We've made some other changes. So we're right. we're active on this. And if we have any doubt, we ask. We don't assume anything. Thanks, Trina. Yeah, thank you, Deborah. Yeah. Any no. other okay. questions? Not here in the room. Okay. All right. I'm going to move on to the third applicant, uh, Naomi Johnson. And she applied for the rental incentive program. <clears throat> she has her property located at 647 Cox District. Um, it's in Bridgewater. So um, it's a two bedroom unit with a private entrance. Um, it's already ready, it's rent ready, um, it's permitted. Um, it's got the two car parking up front and she wants to do a two year term. Um, the, I'm sorry for the error, but on my document here, it's actually not 8,000, it's 6,200. And I could update that document, and send it to you, John, for your records. Um, Thank you. And that's based on having two occupants in this unit. Um, one is a local worker, um, a teacher at Woodstock. Um, she meets all of the eligibility requirements. Um, and one thing I will note that uh, her program, her application is based with her property being in Bridgewater. It's right across the border and so this speaks to our new program that we're talking about tonight. So if you have questions regarding the location, we'll be talking about it in a few minutes. Right, so this currently meets all the requirements except that it's not located in Woodstock and we're about to have a discussion about whether to allow for wow. our cases. Correct. But still a qualified Woodstock worker tenant, uh, yeah? Yeah, that's part of it. That's what, that's what they're gonna write. Absolutely. Yes, correct. Cool. I think we're Brett, I think you might have. Did you log in without audio? It's just, it's getting close to that. Level. No, 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 it's not. If you log in without, one of you is logged in with audio. It was off audio, but it did sound like something was picking up all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So, uh, given that this one, so why don't we approve the, well, sorry, are there any, if, if are there any other questions or are there any questions about this other than the location of the building? All right, sorry, hold on one second. I just want to try to, to fix this. If, if th those of you who aren't speaking, if you could mute yourself, uh, Antonia and Todd, we're seeing some noises here. Just to make sure if we can. Okay, it seems like it's okay here. No, no. I was just checking. And then, no, are you, you're logged in with audio, right? No, uh, without. I was just double checking it. So, yeah. No. <laughs> I, I was logged it on for one second. I was logged in without audio too. I think it was something else. All right. Um, so should we, how about my suggestion is that we vote on the first two incentives for the four units, two applicants, and then we hold off on this until we, until we um, have the discussion about the program. Which is I, when, Todd, so, uh, uh, so yes, but if no one disagrees, that in this particular instance, because it's going to be a qualified, can we just vote in all three in this particular instance, then talk about blanket saving, or do we have to separate it out? No, 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 no. We don't have to separate it. Fine. Let's vote on all three. This one will vote contingent on approving the pro on, on them meeting the eligibility yeah. requirements by the end of this meeting. <laughs> Sounds like a motion, John. Was that a motion? Well, well, sorry, hold on. We have more discussion, and then we'll have. Well, let's make the motion. Todd, why don't you make the motion? Then we still have discussion. Yeah, making the motion to. Uh, approve or deny these three units as presented by the amazing Trina with the condition that the third one that's on the screen now uh, is approved based on uh, the allowance of these monies flowing outside of the district of the town of Woodstock. All right. Is there a second? Second. second. All right. Further discussion, Joe. Well, um, well, my concern is that is that um, Um, there's some type of assurance that the tenant does work in Woodstock and how that assurance matters. Okay. And 
will it continue with, with further tenants? For the second that year. Trina, no, you in other words, if this tenant leaves, what happens? Yeah. <laughs> and then the next guy says, I don't, you know. Trina, do you okay. want to address that? Yep. I can take it. Um, so we set up uh, what we're calling compliance. Um, and I go every six months and reach out to the landlord about their tenant to make sure there's not been a change um, and revalidate that they're still employed in Woodstock. So, for example, the teacher sent me a copy of their paycheck that showed me how many hours they're working and their location of their employer, et cetera. In six months, I'll go back and do that again. I'll do it every six months until the end of the term. If something was to happen and a tenant changes jobs, because um, life happens and things happen, um, that landlord would still be, say they still have another year in their term, they would, at the end of that lease, that person would move out and they would need to get a new tenant for the rest of the term of the year that works in Woodstock. So we're not kicking anybody out. That's not what we're trying to do, but we're also holding uh, their feet to the fire on what our requirements are and allowing them some flexibility to address situations like that when they come up. Well, I don't I don't mean to play a little hotball with this, but if the first tenant, which is currently what, a teacher in Woodstock, is that correct? Yeah, one of them, yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah. using it as an example. The, the person, the teacher in Woodstock, they decide to move, whatever. Um, the next, or, for example, if if the, if a current, for example, if the current employed, the current tenant was employed at the Woodstock Inn and changes jobs to killing me. Um, okay, then what happens, point one, and, well, he has to leave. So you have to, He'll have to move out at the end of his term right. if he moves okay. outside of Woodstock as far okay. as his appointment. Okay, so, the next, so then the, the landlord has difficulty getting a tenant that works in Woodstock to occupy that space. And they don't get the money. They don't get the second year money. Well, but it's all the time. So no, no, point, no. They've, they've lived there for a couple of years, so they, right? No, 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 no. The the we yeah. don't we pay the money every every act, what twelve months or six months? Yeah, for a two year term, he the money doesn't get paid out until uh the after the first after the second year lease term happens. So for Naomi, if she's running it out, she for she's in the program for two years is what she wants to sign up for. We get proof of the employment now. We give and proof of the lease, et cetera. Um, and I have a database that I track this in and I set the dates for tracking six months later. In six months, I'm gonna follow up again. If they're still working there, fine. No action taken, we just go on. At the end of the first year, before the second year lease starts, I check employment again. And that's when they'll get the second part of their payment. So they don't oh, no. get all the money up front on these rental and center programs. So, all right. So we have, is there any other discussion? All right. We have a motion to approve these with a contingency on the last one for our next dessert. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Any opposed? <laughs> any abstentions? No, I'm, I'm okay. No. We're gonna we're gonna discuss the bigger picture in a little bit. So I'm not. That's what I'm not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So would you would you do you want to vote on on? No, but we can we can do it this way. I think it's not. I think it's a little what, funny. What, I think it's a little odd to do it this way, but that's fine. All right. So do but yes. I'm, you're voting yes, I'm, given the voting, with the yes. Okay. Fine. Is there any any? You don't have to. But okay. any opposed? <laughs> All right. So I was following the, the I mean, Joe Swanson's methods at the select board. I thought this was a prudent way, Larry. You always teach me something new, and I defer to you, sir. <laughs> All right. So the next item. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the proposed changes to the rental incentive, just just to the rental incentive program, which is the program that we we're just talking about. 
Okay. Okay. Thanks, John. So earlier this year, we talked about that we wanted to improve the success rate of the rental incentive program. Last year, we had two participants in that program. Um, so we thought about the enhancements and what they could be. And one of the things that we wanted to do was the location. So we'll, let's talk about that first. We've got people that work in the that live in the surrounding areas that work in Woodstock. And we thought it would be prudent, just in the case of Naomi's home, it's technically in Bridgewater, uh, but the person works in Woodstock, that we, if we widen the net, we could get more response to the rental incentive while still holding to um, our need to be a worker in Woodstock, uh, no matter if, they're, if the home is in Woodstock or one of the surrounding towns, they still need to work in Woodstock. And the reason we thought that was important is because so many people who work in Woodstock do live in our surrounding towns. So for example, Heartland is very important, Water is important, Reading is important. If you... So it feels, um, it feels like we can have more success and still control where the money goes because it goes just to Woodstock workers. I think we should discuss each element in, in well, why don't you keep going? I, um, okay. I'm just a little, let's keep going. So there are two other changes that you're proposing. So the second change we propose is to change the, uh, the term, the lease length. So you can see we've added in the chart below six months. Um, we've heard many times there's a need for a shorter term to allow for um, seasonal workers that come in um, and my understanding from that, that a seasonal worker would be here around six months for a, a quote, a season. Um, so that's why we uh, have added a six month lease. We cut the incentive amount in half basically, and we're just trying to make it more attractive for short term rental owners and second homeowners that maybe have a gap in time in their home or their, their uh, to rent it out in between times when they come in and utilize it. So there's a couple things in there we were trying to address. Well, I can... Any, yeah, let's, let's just keep going on the on okay. that, and then we can talk about any of them. Okay. Go ahead. And then the, uh, the next change we're proposing, we've changed our chart here down below and we are, <clears throat> we've changed it so it's, it, it's focuses on qualified tenants um, in the house uh, that are being housed, not the number of bedrooms. If you recall before, we didn't have this first column. It was just what size home they had and they were able to receive a grant. We thought it would be prudent to um, incentivize people to house more than one qualified tenant. Um, you've got couples that maybe uh, both work in Woodstock or um, other situations, but we are throwing in if you have, or people that maybe want to get a roommate with somebody else and you have two workers living in a two bedroom home. Um, so that person would get a little bit more of an incentive to rent their home to somebody in that type of situation. Um, and then the last thing we kind of talked about is space efficiency is kind of what I've been talking kind of dubbing it but last year we had uh three bedroom homes in the rental program that were rented to one person and i think that's wonderful that they found a, a local worker in woodstock to live in that three bedroom unit but it's not an effective use of the space there could have been um a, a couple again with couple people living there or family living there. And so we're kind of throwing out a bone to give out some additional funds um, if you have more people living there. So for example, I can walk you through this example. On Naomi's application, she has two people living in the unit, that are proposed living in the unit. One is a qualified tenant. So in this case, and if she's doing a two-year term, she would get the $6,000 for a two-year lease. 
And then I, mean, I do have an error on here that's supposed to be 200 in that first box. That's where the 6,200 came in because the teacher's um, <clears throat> wife does not work in Woodstock, but there is a second person living in a two bedroom home, which is a more effective use of space. And she works for NICU at Dartmouth. So basically incentivizing landlords to be, to think about who they're renting to, how many folks they're renting to, and have all these things play into the equation of their final tenants. Trying to uh, improve efficiency and effectiveness of the programs. While still recognizing that whether where um, the EDC's money is going is to um, local workers. Qualified, right, which are the qualified tenants. All right, so three major changes outside of Woodstock, six month leases, and the, this chart of, of incentives based primarily on qualified tenants, but with a small additional bonus for additional people beyond those qualified tenants. All right, so any comments or questions, discussion of these? And yeah. you can see, by the way, that if we approve this or in its entirety, then the third applicant would, yeah. you know, would be approved because it's in Bridgewater. But OK, but if we don't approve it or we don't approve that part of it, then they wouldn't. All right. Any comments or questions? Yeah. Todd, go ahead. Yeah. So I, I went back and forth with this, but I think it is worth mentioning. So first of all, great changes. Thank you for more time to read it. And this is really great. Um, yeah. My. My only my only issue now is that I'm a landlord and qualified tenants make sense to me. So if I'm running to Nikki, the teacher, and Nikki has a partner that works at Dartmouth, I'm still gonna rent to Nikki and get the incentive. It shouldn't I shouldn't get more money in my opinion if Nikki's partner doesn't work in Woodstock. And the reason for that is if there's and I, I went through this in a dry run and I think it makes sense. I'm a landlord. There's a couple and there's a single person. Both people are identical credit, identical job, same pillars of the community. Who should I pick? Well, I'm going to go to the two person and disqualify the single person because I'm going to get an extra 200 bucks. Is that is that some decision we should be making um, based on what the goals are of providing more qualified workers in Woodstock with housing? I'm not saying that I don't agree with two people is better than one i'm saying should we be in that business because all things considered as a pure business decision mm -hmm. it's nonsensical for a landlord to pick the first single person even though it still only adds one woodstock qualified worker so what i what i would love to do is have this either you know debated or amended to just remove the additional tenant monies um and just base it on qualified tenants Juna has Dude, a good answer to that. Can she give it to you? Yeah, for sure. I'm sorry, sorry I missed one. Was somebody I asking Jill a question? Jill, I think you were suggesting that Trina would address that. Is that right? So one thing that we were talking about is just the, you know, um, economical impact of having two people as far as additional residents in Woodstock too. I mean, there's other benefits above and beyond uh, just the space of the unit when you have more people living in the area. Um, it looks like Marion wants to maybe add a comment regarding this. I did. I just wanted to add that um, just from a, an efficiency point of view, Todd, I hear what you're saying, but like if you look at space available, a single person could fit in a one bedroom apartment. A family of, you know, a, a parent and two kids could not fit in a one bedroom apartment. And so it does seem counter to the goal of generating more housing for those workers to use a space inefficiently. In other words, if you rent to a Woodstock worker who is a single person, a space that a family could have taken, then that single place opens up and the family can't take it. So just from an efficiency point of view, it seems like a good idea. And that, and that makes that makes a lot of sense to me, but but I the one point I just want to make and Mary and I, I I really love to just have you hone in on this. Mm -hmm. We're telling the landlord to pick size, and it's obvious which side the landlord would pick. 
no matter what, if the landlord had a two bedroom apartment and there was one qualified tenant on each side of the equation, whether that qualified tenant had use of the two bedrooms or not, the landlord could then make a decision based on their own credit, business, business decision, vibe, whatever it might be without a financial component being the differentiator. And again, I, 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 I'm saying I, I, I don't disagree with yeah. this as written, but I'm just, are we mm -hmm. supposed to, we're going to tell that landlord who to pick. They will not pick the other you way. Know what, Todd, Todd, I would just, I'm just going to push back on one thing. I, and I don't know what my opinion is. I'm just thinking this through with you, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but um, it's a $200 difference. So like, if they feel like it's a better deal to go with the other person, we're not saying you can't, right? We're just saying, we're going to give you a greater incentive to 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 you know handle the situation in a certain way I, that's what i'm thinking yeah i feel it i feel it i'm just thinking of ebenezer scrooge who just looks at pennies is that i don't even know if that's a real thought and i, I don't I'm, I'm for either side to be honest so Debra. yeah i have um i have a, as a single person living in woodstock and renting um i have a personal opinion about it and of how it would affect me, as well as being an ADC member and wanting to get people into housing. So I actually, Todd, I, I appreciate what you're saying. And I also understand this chart and why we want to incentivize. But at the same time, we have to look at, you know, again, am I, it's hard to find a one bedroom. It's hard to find a studio. And it may be easier to find something that has more, more than one bedroom. Otherwise, I'm, I'm out of the area. Right, and I'm a single person, so it's exactly what you're saying. All of a sudden, there's points against me for being a single person that I'm only allowed to, or um, landlords are only motivated to give me a smaller space because I'm single. Um, so I think it is complex. I like the idea that it's incentivized. I and yet, what's the it? That, what that the additional tenants, non-qualified tenants, are incentivized. Is that what you mean by you said? I like the idea that it's incentivized. Yeah, I, What's I, the, I understand. I understand this, you know, and I was part of. I understand why it's created this way, but I also am, am saying, for what Todd's saying, like it does put a single person in a an odd position. That you're saying I can only be, in, you know, landlords around here are only going to be incentivized to put me in a studio or a one bedroom uh, because they have an additional incentive. But one of the things that I think balances that is this incentive for me as a single person to get a roommate or a housemate to share a home with me. Um, but I would say that that, that needs to be uh, more of an incentive as an adult person to share a, a home. If there's one bathroom instead of two bathrooms, I should be as incentivized as an owner is to get two workers in there. Do you know what I mean? You know, just quickly on my own reverse on this, the $200 is a small number and it does cost more for a landlord to have more people in the dwelling. So that's sort of an interesting counterpoint to my own original point. It's, it is, it, it's, it's just, it just muddies it a bit, but I, but I, I, I again, I, it all makes sense either way. Uh, but it is a small amount of money, Mary, and you're, you're correct with that. Even Ebenezer might ignore that in the end of the day. I, if, if I can make a quick, oh, sorry, is there, no, there are no hands up for the moment. Okay, I just want to make a comment. I think we're, I, I, I think we're missing, or, or partially missing, maybe, um, a kind of a very simple, small point, which is that, let's just say, for example, that we, um, we gave five, two hundred dollar grants to a group of people because there were five additional residents who are not qualified workers, right? In other words, you know, a family comes in with one qualified worker and two other people, that's two, two extras, so to speak, two $200 ones. And then throughout this program, we end up giving it to five. That's $1,000. And that's six months of a qualified worker. So the program is not about the efficiency of real estate or anything else. The pro this program is has a singular purpose to the program to to incentive to create housing for qualified workers. 
Now, that would that would argue in the extreme if we were, you know, narrowly so narrowly focused. That would say the two hundred dollars should go away. It's not. It's taking away money that we could use for our purpose. The count, the, the broader view, and this is why I think maybe Todd or others have, you know, would be comfortable with either, and I would be too. I think the broader view is more people in Woodstock is economic development, and what this program exists within is the Economic Development Commission, and we're trying to do economic development. So it's not as if we're enforcing something else. So I think that's that's well, take the word efficient. But it was what Trina used. It was efficiency of real estate. That's what that was. How this was that's written. that in my mind has nothing, literally nothing, to do with economic development. That's to do with community with that's societal right. development. What is economic development? Is that person, that extra person, is going to eat, and they're going to buy, and they're going to, you know, you know, and they're going to add to the to the community. So it it. So I think you can. The reason why I'm making this point is I think philosophically we can, we as an EDC could support either of these two, but the way that I would choose is is whether or not I would rather have a chance to build up to maybe one additional worker, or whether I would rather have more individual non-workers adding to the population. And I don't know how you make that trade-off. It's a hard trade-off to make. But wasn't the what's it, what was the intent? Of this program. John, I just want to um the 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 economic sorry, hold development. On. Marion, hold on oh, one second. Yeah. Joe first, and then Marion. Go ahead. What was the initial intent of no. this program? That's why I said the narrow intent is nothing to do with that, the population, no. with it, other than um, making available space for which stocks employees to have. I mean, that was right. That's no, I mean, we uh, not just not actually. Extrapolate. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, so. We can extrapolate that and just make it, you know, as broad as we want to. But in my view, and the reason why I support it is because the intent was to provide housing for people, for employers to be able to have employees. Right, right. Okay, so Marion and then Jill. Yeah, I just want to make the point that um, there are many Woodstock employees or potential Woodstock employees who come as a package with children or with a spouse or whatever. And so I think saying like that somehow we're not supporting economic development by, when I talk about efficiency of housing, I'm talking about efficiency of housing in terms of providing the most space for you know, potential Woodstock employees. And I think a lot of those people may have children or may have a spouse or may have a partner and they need, they can't fit in a, in a one bedroom apartment. So why not incentivize the bigger spaces well, to, to give well, space to those employees that they can use them? Uh, uh, Jill. Uh, I, well, the only the comment I'd bring in is if one of these additional non-qualified tenants is a child in school, that's ten thousand dollars a year. That's quite a lot of economic development. Um, yeah, you're you're speaking about the the subsidy or the funding that we would get from the state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are there other? Well, as an employer, we employ folks from outside the country. They don't come with families, and we critically need them. Um, uh, granted, it's only for a short period of time, six months maybe, and you know, I'm going to look a lot closer to this proposal for six months. But um, they add significantly to the efficiency and survival of the business. Um, so for me, that seems to be what we intend to do in the first place. Todd, and then let's maybe we can take a vote then. Todd? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay moving out from this either way. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, it's all good. And maybe we can just go and look, if we have a problem that a bunch of people, landlords, uh, got a bunch of people with a bunch of kids in there and we want to debate that later. I think that's great. So I, I don't need to talk about it anymore. But 
uh, I do want to just make sure we talk about the Bridgewater thing um, in our totality and, uh, and, you know, when we get to that, but, but this is, yeah, I, I, I agree. More people is better for me. Uh, I'm not sure that as a landlord, I would play it fair, but it's still more housing. It's still the mission and it's, it's good work. So I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Okay. Are there any comments or questions? Does everyone understand the, I'll call it the Bridgewater point. It, it's housing, yeah, it's housing for Woodstock workers. It's just not in. Right. Any discussion about any other parts of this? All right. So I'm going to suggest that I'm going to suggest that we vote on this proposal as presented. If someone will, and then if if you're opposed to a part of it, like the two hundred dollars, just as an example, then vote against this proposal, and then we'll have a vote. If that if that's the point of contention, then we'll have a vote on this proposal without that. It needs five votes to pass. I also want to say that not just based on this discussion, but certainly amplified by this discussion, I think there are no rules about what I'm about to say, but I think it's appropriate that we go to the select board with this with our approval of this program. Um, if we if we decide and I'm, and, and if we decide to vote for the two hundred dollars, but even just the vote about Bridgewater is enough to trigger that. And I, I would go to them supporting um, just to, just so to be clear. I, I just want to bring up yeah. we in the I don't think we need to go to the select board because this Bridgewater thing was in the original proposal that went before the select board. The other pieces were not. Is that right, Trina? Then why yes. are we voting on it now? Because we wanted to present you the whole thing as a package of what the old was and what the new is. I will, let, let's, let's discuss whether with the process following this vote. I think what's important is that we decide what we were in favor of. I believe the select board will support what we decide. I mean, I, you know, and, and I'll present it as such, but let's, let's discuss that, Jill, to figure that out. Okay. I'd like to make, I'd like to make the motion to, to project or approve this. Well, sorry, actually, before you, well, Larry, can you make your comment after the motion or do you want to? Okay. Because we have, all right, so there's a motion to approve it as is. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, discussion, Larry. Yeah, I would, uh, I would vote for it, but I would specifically want to go to the select board again, even if it seems to be some sense that they've already, and be uh, specifically on the Bridgewater issue. Right, because they have raised significant concerns before and they've placed a contingency on it. I just think out of, out of politeness, you know, I, 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 I agree. Think, I agree. Yeah. Okay, so is this, is this related to the childcare thing? Yes, that was that was the issue on which, yeah. and there was, and my read of the discussion was that it was a philosophical, deep felt belief that money dollars traveling over the border was not a good thing, was not appropriate. I, I mean, obviously, no one was opposed to having more childcare, but it was just it struck some select board members as just wrong, and so they they put a contingency on it subject to it being legal. I think if we had left it at least to one select board member or two, they would have voted against it. But yeah, I agree. So I think we, I, I, you know, I, it's not worth the risk of the EDC. We have, we have a great relationship and we should yeah. continue yeah. to have respect yeah. on both sides. And if, we if have they have an approval rating, we can, we can work on it. Yeah. There's a okay. big, there's a bright line between a hundred percent and less than a hundred percent. I mean, we, we would fight for anything that we all vote in the affirmative for. We would, we would, you know. Correct. Correct. I'm not suggesting that I'm not suggesting that we go to the select board and say, what do you think? I'm suggesting we go to the select board and say, this is what we recommend. Okay. Whatever it is that we recommend. So, you know. All right. So there's a motion and it's been seconded. Is there any further discussion? All right. So, again, we if if we get five votes for this, it will pass. If we don't, we can consider another motion with a modified proposal. All those in favor of the proposal as it stands, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Well, all of that drama for nothing. All right. Um, <laughs> no, it, it so reinforces to the select board that we had unanimous consent on this issue. Good, I think terrific. Okay. So, good um, conversation. And, yeah. And, so, um, good. So, congratulations on this. I think this is a, a subtle and complicated m modification to a program to tweak it. This is, a, I think, 
a great way to evolve. And again, I think I wrote, this is the first time I think I put in my email, my listserv post, you know, congratulations to some group for the work that you've done. I think 10 units that we're, you know, helping to create, I don't think we can claim complete credit for it, is fantastic. And can I just ask one quick question for Jill or Trina, whoever, maybe you can't do this so quickly in your head, but how much, if we were to expend all the rest of our funding, how many, how many, and everyone were to take their full allotment because they adhere to the program for however many years, how many more units do we have the capacity to, to fund? Like what would, is it another four or five? Um, you know what, you don't, if you, do, do we yeah, don't need don't to waste know. time now? I will say you... uh, for the rental incentive, we're not asking for any additional monies. No, no, um, I know that. I'm just, I'm just wondering how much money we have left in the fund. If you could just let us know that sometime in the next couple of weeks, just send an email to yes. the EDC. Yes. This is John being that. excited about success, Trina, and wondering how yeah. much more success. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I'm, I, I'm excited. This program has momentum. It's extremely yeah. well designed and carefully managed as Trina has answered concerns of the EDC and concerns from the community members. And, uh, this is exactly what we should, you know, this is terrific. It's a real success. And I want to promote it as such. I think the childcare program got a lot more visibility and people were extremely supportive. I think they're just as supportive of workforce housing. And I just want to make sure we get the message out. And I love the way, by the way, that you started off the presentation with here, you know, we have five, yeah. if we get these five, we'll have 10. So congratulations. That's exciting. Yeah, Thank great, you. Great work. Thanks, Trina. Thanks, Thanks, to, awesome. thanks to everyone for their help and support. Appreciate it. Yep. Okay. Um, we have um, two more items that I know of on the agenda. One is the simplified analysis of, and um, now that Patrick is not here, can we just call it the marketing issue? But, he, but I think realistically, he wanted to call it more than marketing, and it's fair, but it's a, it's a discussion about tourism. It's a discussion about marketing. It's a discussion about certain infrastructure. So, uh, what I'd like to do here is and uh, is just get a directional sense if you're comfortable. We don't want to. I think there are at least three of us that are. What's it called? The Patrick Webmarketing Program. Where are you going with that, John? No, no, no. Oh, I just okay. I was just trying to respect his his suggestion at the last meeting. Yeah. We don't need to dive into a huge amount of detail tonight, but just a directional sense of what we're about to share is roughly right. There are three of us, Marion, me, and Greta, who are taking pieces of this forward. Uh, and we will continue to do that outside of this meeting. But I want to just give you a snapshot of where we are now. In particular, you're each going to, and I will too, are going to feel the pressure to line edit some of the slides that I'm about to show you, because I'm about to show you in a minute some of the questions that we're going to ask on the surveys. And as soon as you see them, and as soon as I re-see them, we're going to want to edit them. Try, we can do that offline. You know, if, if, but if we're, if Greta, I think in your merchant survey, you've got five questions. Well, I've edited since. Okay, the, that's fine. No, no, that's fine. But my point is you've got five questions. Yep. If someone thinks we should have 50 questions, that's a valid point to bring up, right? But, and if someone thinks that one of the questions really is poisonous and we can't ask it, that's valid to bring up. But, you know, calling the merchants, we need to call the merchants, comma, lodgers and restaurants. Don't bring that up tonight. Just talk to Greta about it or or Marion or on, on some of the other things May. So. With that caveat, let me just show you what um, this is. Todd, you want to reinforce your skull, or is this going to not a risk of explosion? This is just one page. I feel good. This is very beautiful. Ah, ah, beautiful. The blue beautiful. Tourism slash marketing slash infrastructure issues to address. This is the same six blue boxes as last time. Much better organized, just but, real proud. But it's just, but it's just really simple. Colors and big type. Right. Thank so you. Between now and August, May, June, July, August, four months, we're going to do two things. We're going to, we're, we're going to take three surveys of the local community, of visitors and of merchants, and we're going to start to brainstorm about infrastructure. 
We're not going to make any decisions. We're just going to do those things. So the three surveys, the local community, we're basically going to ask the local community, in effect, how concerned are you about tourists, about visitors? For visitors, we're going to ask, did you have a positive experience? Why or why not? Again, that's not the question, but that's the theme. And for merchants, we're going to say, what would the impact on you be if we had more visitors or fewer visitors or the same? And that, those are the surveys. And then in parallel with that, we're going to start to brainstorm what would it cost to fix some of the most important problems temporarily or permanently? You know, what would it cost to rent extra bathrooms for Wassel Weekend? Uh, what would it cost to get a food tent on whatever? Um, you know, what would it cost to build a parking garage under the parking lot at the Woodstock Inn? I actually know the answer to that. Sure, to... You wouldn't know that there are infrastructure issues until you get the service. Correct. And that's why we won't be making any decisions. It's basically mm -hmm. trying to, for those three issues, parking possibly, but food and bathrooms, it's making a bet that those issues may arise. And if they do, it's better to have spent three months brainstorming about them. We're not going to spend a penny. But let's, I mean, we don't have to pretend that we have no idea about it. If it turns out that it's not an issue, we won't, won't do anything. So that's what we're going to do between May and August. And then, rather than all these public meetings and or, or different kinds of public meetings, we're going to use September, October, November, December EDC meetings to figure out, to say, this is what the survey said. Right. This is what the possible options are. What should we do? And we'll have four public meetings, no extra meetings. What this does mean is that we probably won't <clears throat> spend much time modifying the community grant process, right? We'll just decide to replicate it. We don't have to decide that tonight, but I'm just saying that if we get embroiled in this, we'll probably just run the community grant program the way we did before, which I think would be fine, but just, just highlighting that possible implication. So this is the way we're proposing to do it. It leaves us by the end of December with the ability, I think, to make a marketing proposal or not, or a modified one that has, that balances the things that we learn, which I think was the intent of not, you know, of, of that, that was the intent of starting all this. So let me just pause there. Is that, oh, sorry. Um, any, can, can I, Larry? I searched through my stuff. I couldn't find it, but like three years ago, four years ago, was it the chamber? What group did, you know, there are people out that, Stopping people on the oh, sidewalk, filling out forms. What's like that? that? The one Woodstock, one Vision, or, or something yes, like that. Yeah. All the post it notes and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it, it was partially funded by the EDC, I believe, because that was my It was, was, it was entirely funded by the EDC. Sorry? <laughs> there was $20,000 involved. Okay. My daughter was involved with yeah. that. Also. Okay. Not that that does this, but it'd be a, a, a thing to be looking at. When yeah. You're good yeah. Vision. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We definitely, fun. we definitely, um, we should gather that up, and there may be a couple of other studies or information or things Change. that we would want to pull in. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I'm just trying to keep it simple. If yeah, my view is again back to Todd's point, which I know I tease him and Michael Malik about, but it's a fair point. We're volunteers. We've only got so much time. My view is if we get this done. And in the extreme, if we get only this done, we'll have done a good job and we'll have met our obligation to the community. If we can do even better than that, and it won't be hard to do what you just suggested, Larry, we should and we will. But but let, let's just make sure we do this. Let's make sure we get the three surveys done and that and that the surveys will help us answer the kind of questions we think we need to answer. Let's make sure we've we don't have to start on infrastructure in September that we've done some pre-work on it so that we only have four months to make the decisions. You know, How are you going about the visitor surveys? Well, yeah, I, I- We're not there yet. Yeah, no, no, I don't, I mean, I think the two ideas that are, the, the, the two ideas that are, the simplest idea is to use our existing database of, of email people and ask them. Um, and we quote, you'll see in the proposed questions that will qualify them was when was the last time you were here, which will eliminate people who have never been here. The second easiest, which may not be possible and isn't necessary, but would be cool is to have QR codes and on all the, you know, retailers and 
they click on it and there's it pops into the survey. But the reason but, why is like to get people to do surveys, you have to catch them right as they're having the experience. If you, you mail it weeks later or whatever, it that's gonna go right into to the trash. If we so I'm just I I think there needs to be some thought around the best way to get but, yeah there's we'll get what we get but right. I just think yeah okay, can I can I come on and um, no. What? Uh -huh. she, said, she said no. <laughs> no. Oh, a rhetorical question. Go it's ahead. A rhetor yeah. Of course. Yeah, when, when, when I first moved in, and I think when Larry moved into the street, or in the um, there were literally more cows in Vermont than there were people. Okay? When we, when I first came into the street, there were maybe 15 active dairy farms in Woodstock. Now there were none. What that tells me is that we are now, and we haven't been past, but we are now a tourist based economy. That's why this is so important. I think it's vitally important. Childcare, without question. Housing, Without question, this is, is really great to so, And you've been advocating for us to look at this yeah. for a while. All right, other comments just on this piece of it, Beth. Uh, Beth, sorry, uh, actually, Roger raised his hand first. So Roger and then Beth. Hi, um, I have a couple of concerns about this this draft plan. One, I don't think you're doing some basic homework which is to quantify the value of tourism to the town as a whole economically. I'm obviously not saying that there isn't any, but you're making an a priori assumption that, that it's, it's an, that, that we somehow know, you can't calculate how much money it's worth spending on marketing until you understand the the full impact of tourism or visiting visitors on the economy as a whole. I'm not talking about individual businesses, I'm talking about the economy as a whole. And I think you need to do that work. You need to establish what the impact is of visitors on the economy as a whole before you start down the road of deciding whether how much you should be spending on marketing and how much you should be spending on infrastructure improvements. Another question is, this is not an EDC specific thing, but the town of Woodstock in general, in its communications and its fact finding needs to stop pretending that qualitative data is quantitative data. These surveys of asking people to fill out something online or going up to them on the street, that's qualitative data. It is not quantitative data. And to base decisions on that as if it was is, is fundamentally flawed. I'm not saying that qualitative data is not valuable, but whether or not filling out surveys, especially online surveys or broadcast surveys of some kind or another and self-selecting the people who are gonna answer them, does not produce quantitative data that helps you make decisions. It produces qualitative data that helps you ask what questions to ask. But uh, so I think you're, you're making assumptions on this document that I don't think you're backing up. Thanks. I, I, it's a very good point. Uh, since it, it, I think it's a very good point, but I think you're actually I think you have overlooked one assumption that we are also making, which is that it's not possible to do more than this. It's just very simple. It's just not possible. So it doesn't matter. We can either do this or not do this, but we can't do more than this. That, so well, now, if, by the if way, I that assumption could that, be wrong. You're, you're, that assumption I've, could I've, be wrong. I'm just saying that it, that was the assumption behind this. Okay, and and that's that's a fair assumption, but you're 
you're you're making decisions or or have made decisions about spending significant portions of EDC's money on a marketing campaign and without knowing the value of the value of of producing that uh, the the return from that campaign to the economy as a whole I don't understand how you can be making decisions about spending one hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollars on a marketing campaign. I understand. I understand that. I, I, I think the only way that we can make the decision is because we have to. It's it, that's it, that's not that's literally the justification. I'm not defending the justification. I'm just stating it. The justification is because we have to decide, and the program is scoped because we can't do anything else. Now, those are, both of those statements could be wrong. But, but now, by the way, but I think we're, you and I on this this piece of the discussion are probably getting into two extremes. I think there are, I, I think your points are still valid, and there may be ways. I think there are ways to kind of creep towards or crawl towards what you're proposing. And in fact, one of the questions that we're asking in the merchant survey. No, I didn't. It's not on this one, but it's something, Greta, that I proposed to you which is to ask the merchants what impact on their sales do they think the EDC marketing program has would be a piece of the economy and and a you know and, and a start at getting at that question in other words if you know because we we know roughly we actually know roughly what the sales are collectively of the Woodstock business community because that's what our options tax is based on for some of the for some of the products so Ask larger questions. Yeah. So, well, let me just let me maybe what we can do here, just in the interest of time, is I, Roger. I've I've registered Roger's point, and Roger, I'd like to figure out rather than these two extremes, let's brainstorm about what is practical uh, to achieve from your perspective. If you would help us think about that, you know, sure. uh, start thinking about it now. You know, what's the you know what can we, what can we do? do so, for example, one thing we can do is ask businesses exactly that question. Um, there's also, by the way, there I have some. There's some I, access to macroeconomists that I can get us to because the organization that I used to run was teaming with them to think about how to measure to how to measure a local economy and even what the impact of uh, how to at least how to measure a local economy. So, Roger, if you can contribute to that discussion. And let's do that soon because it, it'll take us time to, to do that. Sure, you know where I am. Yeah, right. All right, Beth. Okay. I have um, two things. The first is that Charlie Kimball used to come to these meetings with very detailed tax information that you can get on a monthly basis. And it seems like there's some of your information about what tourism versus, I mean, you can look at May, June, July through December and then the rest of the year and, and see what the impact is on all, on sales tax, not just rooms and meals and alcohol tax. Right. Um, and the, so that, that information is right out there for everyone. Uh, uh, and you go to the state of BT Department of Taxes, and it's per town. Um, the second thing I have to say is, and I don't mean to volunteer him, but could I don't think it's beyond his ken that that David Brown might be able to create a touch screen at the Welcome Center that visitors could could anonymously or not anonymously answer your couple of questions for. And, you know, then you're getting a very random sample of visitor information. Just a thought. Yeah, it's a great idea. And, um, and it relates to Deborah's, um, Deborah's comment. I just want to put up that you don't have to go further than the EDC website to get that data. Exactly. Um, on on what the trends are, and you can see, by the way, that the trends have been, you know, pretty significant. This is this is seven tenths of one percent of the revenue of Woodstock businesses by quarter, 
in the areas of lodging, prepared food and, and alcohol. Um, and so you can see, by the way, that this is, you know, in, in the first full year, it was 230,000. We're now up about 50%. Um, I, this, what this doesn't tell you and what Charlie's data didn't tell you either was what effect marketing had on those numbers. But um, no, but, but you can also see, you can not have the local, local options tax, but the entire sales, you know, Vermont sales tax, the 6% of goods sold. Uh, the and um, I'm going to tell him, Beth, that you did volunteer him publicly in a public recording meeting. Right? Are there <laughs> other, are there other comments about the the, the um the overall philosophy the the overall approach here? What what comes to mind to me is uh, <laughs> an old WC Fields movie when you're sitting at a poker table and somebody points out that the game may not be completely up and up and says, well, yeah, maybe you're right, but it's the only game in town. Right. So that's what we're stuck with right now. But, you know, I, but I do think there, there probably are. I, I think I'm being a little bit defensive on this. <laughs> no, I mean, look, we had at the last meeting, we had one member threaten to blow up his head. If it's complicated. Thinking of Todd's well-being, I don't want to, I don't want Roger to induce an explosion, but he's making a fair point. And Beth, I really like the idea of of I mean, touch screen. I think it's a great idea. If you got, if you would be willing to host it, sounds like you would, then Dave can, I think could easily implement this. And the okay. chamber could, could kind of help with that with some infrastructure. We don't have it all, but you know, I think that it would be important data for all of us. Yeah, absolutely. No, no, absolutely. And by the way, we intend to share all of this with anyone who wants it. So, so I'm just gonna, this is the part where I, my preamble was control yourselves. Just remember, so just to give you a sense of the kind of questions, and also I think the length of it, these are short and sweet. I think these, these surveys, if they're complete and they're not, could be completed in two minutes or three minutes. In what, if the visitor survey, what year did you last visit Woodstock? How did you react to each of these aspects of your visit? Lodging, food, indoor activities, outdoor activities, we'll change the list, shopping, local people, other. And were they great, good, was each one great, good, okay, not good, really bad. How likely are you to recommend that a friend or colleague visit Woodstock? Very likely, definitely not. How would you rate your overall experience? Really good, not so good, really bad. If there was one thing you could change to make it more appealing to you and to others like you, what would it be? Just an open-ended response. And if you recall, can you be a little bit more specific about when you visited? Because I think we probably want to know if you, you know, if you were really worried about you couldn't find a place to eat, and it was, was it Wassel weekend, or was it April 15th, or something like that. That's it. Something really simple. Deborah? I just add one thing, which is, after how would you rate your experience, the next question should be, what's your, what was your favorite piece? Of, the first open-ended should be positive. Okay, good, yeah. And then, you know, yeah, like, good. what would you change? I, 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 think it's, I don't know, maybe there is, but this should be like, best or worst. Um, yeah. Yeah, just just don't go right to the like channel. Yeah, yeah. Go, we'll, to, go to the bats. Yeah. I have a dumb right. question. Yeah. We're used to it. Yeah. <laughs> if you're soliciting, is it really stupid to ask them if Woodstock reminds them of someplace else and what that might be? All right. Wait a minute. I'm just gonna, it's not really stupid, but you're violating my my request. <laughs> That's all I do is violate them. Yeah, right. All right. So I'm, I'm just going back to you. As, as we, can, we can refine these. If you've got ideas like that for the visitor survey, send them to me. <laughs> for the community survey, send them to Marion. Now, Marion, by the way, I, I just to be clear, Marion hasn't seen this because she and I, I just made this up. And so she may completely disagree, in which case the next draft of this will be very different. But I'm just going to just. John sent these to me as I was driving home from work today. Yeah, sorry. And got to cook we, dinner. <laughs> we tried four times to get together between the last meeting and this meeting. We didn't. And I just wanted to put something out there. Who are you? What's your role in the community? Full time, second homeowner, something else. How many days have you spent here so we can kind of understand? Please indicate how important each of the five current priorities are to you. 
that's really a way of, of trying to understand how important marketing is, but it's a fair way of answering mm -hmm. the question. And we might learn something interesting. How do you feel about the number of visitors coming to Woodstock? Select all the statements you agree with. And here it's just a mishmash of statements and forget about the sequence and the order and the wording, but it's just basically trying to elicit what people feel. Woodstock is much too crowded most of the time. I like it when the town seems full of people. More often than not, I have trouble getting reservations at restaurants. I've seen visitors to town urinating in public. It bothers me that stores in Woodstock keep closing. I worry that the restaurants and stores we have won't be able to survive if the number of visitors is limited. Visitors are sometimes a problem, but the problems are limited to a few times each year. The positives of living in Woodstock far outweigh the negatives. The negatives of living in Woodstock are beginning to outweigh the positives. It would be appropriate for the EDC to fund temporary solutions on, on key holidays or seasons to the lack of public restrooms or the lack of places to get a simple sandwich. EDC should not fund restrooms or lunch capacity, even temporarily. Do you think the EDC should continue to fund annual marketing programs to encourage visitors to Woodstock? Increase it, maintain it, reduce it, eliminate it. If the EDC does continue to fund marketing, would it be appropriate for local merchants to pay a portion of the program? Make no contribution, make a small contribution, pay for the whole thing. If there was one thing you could change about Woodstock to make it more appealing, what would it be? And it could, we could also ask, you know, what's the best, what's your best thing about Woodstock? And then the merchant survey, what type of business are you, where are you located? Considering the experience of visitors, would you assume these individuals leave feeling disappointed, not wanting to return, disappointed by parts, but coming, but open to coming again, or very happy? In order to provide a positive experience, what would you identify as the most important piece of infrastructure for the town to invest in? And how much year-over-year -year growth in revenue? Oh, sorry, you did have this in here. How much year-over-year -year growth in revenue from tourism alone is necessary to sustain your business? It's a slightly different question, sorry. If the marketing budget of the town must grow every year, what percentage of that budget should be covered by the local merchants? So just to give you, these are really quick, oops, sorry. So these are really quick surveys, just to give you a sense of it. Um, it, does not, I, it does not get at Roger's point. I think he's correct about that. Uh, although I do think there are some survey questions, particularly the merchants that could get to a piece of it. And we should think about that. If you have feedback- And, and, and you too. It could, if we ask some questions about, we could. So I think we have to explore that. So I'm just in the interest of time, because we have one more topic on the agenda. If you have, so Marion is going to drive the community survey. Greta is going to drive the merchant survey, and she's already working with the chamber and Jeff Kahn, the merchant group to, you know, they're the meeting next you're invited to their meeting next week. Basically. Oh, did they respond to email? I hadn't seen it. Yeah, no, they, someone told me. Okay, great. It's happening, but okay. you're invited. You're on the email somewhere. <laughs> um, and and I will, with Patrick's departure, I will focus on the visitor survey, but I'd be happy happy to have help. Um, where okay. Are, and, sorry? Where are these questions? Are they online? Are they're, they're, uh, oh, this, document, this document is on the EDC's website for this current meeting. And and I do just want to say for the community survey yeah. that uh, that it's still in in definitely still in development and um, yeah. so please send me suggestions. Yeah, I'm sorry. Are, I, know, but, yeah. I know you've already had contributions from Susie and so forth, which are completely not represented here. I didn't have a copy. Right, of and I so. yeah, and and I will include those. Yeah. So are we going to be so, able to have a for EDC members? Are we going to be able to have a a living document so we can just check in on it or anything? Or sure. Are we yeah, I to think do that's that? a good idea, Greta. Um, not particularly in response to Todd's question, but um, that sounds good. But um, what you were saying earlier, Larry, sorry to point, uh, that in, he just mentioned the EDC website, the our vision or our community, one Woodstock, one vision, or whatever that is, Beth, Kathy in the chamber did point it out to me and it is on the EDC website. Yeah. So if you want to go on oh, that, nice. it's under documents um, and then special projects. It's a very large document, a zip file, but or zip drive, but, um, it's there and it's interesting to go through. Yeah. I would say that not a ton of it pertains to this particular initiative, but it's good to look at. Yeah. When I go on the EDC website, it says Netscape browser required. Please insert your AOL disk. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. 
Um, so, all right, if, if I don't sense, I, I, my, my comments are tamping down, lots of debate have been effective, thank you. Um, we have one more topic to discuss, but please do provide a ton of feedback. This is, was sort of a, I just wanted to put something out there that we could give us, you know, start our thinking about this. I think we probably have one more meeting Let's just talk about process for a second. And then we launched the surveys. We plan to launch the survey immediately after the next EDC meeting, the surveys, which means that we'll all have a chance to kind of look at it. We, but, but if you want to give input, you've got four weeks to give it to the three of us. We'll review it at, at the next meeting. We'll, we'll put our stamp of approval on it, and then we'll plan to, to do the survey following that. Marion and Greta, does that, are you comfortable with that schedule? That sounds great, especially I'm, I believe I'm meeting with the merchants next week, so that might. Okay. Yeah, you, you yeah. may be a little bit constrained. I think Marion and I have a little bit more flexibility, but see if you can achieve that. Mm -hmm. And if not, I think we still have another, I mean, we're not going to be doing a survey for two months. It'll, it'll at most be a couple of weeks or three weeks, maybe. Okay. Um, we have a working group update. Stuart has been patient. Stuart told me he was coming on at the end, but he's mm -hmm. patiently sitting here. Um, and Joe, Joe has to be here. So he, um, but Stuart and Joe are working with another group of folks to, um, to think about downtown rejuvenation, uh, and, um, have some updates on a piece of what they're thinking. So I don't know, Stuart, do you want to, sure. you want to just lay this out and then Joe, you want to comment on it? And I have yeah. your, I have the document that you had. Okay, um, so we've been working on downtown, uh, really what we call downtown investment, and we're, we're focusing on two different areas. One is facades, and just to frame what we're defining as downtown uh, investment or rejuvenation, we're not trying to, to invest EDC money in things that should be taken care of necessarily by the municipality or necessarily by business owners. But we're trying to use EDC money as a resource to jumpstart investment that we think needs to happen and hopefully use it as a catalyst to, to make things happen that we think are significant for the town. So there's two categories. The first uh, relates to facades, and we're working on two different, two different sort of ideas. Um, on the facade renovation program, it's the concept is trying to use a, a combination of, of potentially EDC money, potentially state grant money and um, building owner money to affect the improvement of the facades in the, in the uh, buildings that we define as being and then sort of in the downtown business district. The approach that we're taking, and we're not, we're not yet at a point where we would ask for, for approval for anything, but the, point, the approach that we're taking is to do a survey of the facades of the buildings in the downtown and sort of come up with a catalog list of sort of critical uh, repairs or improvements that we think need to be made, get those um, and, and try to, to sort of quantify those improvements and so that we would have a list of sort of quote unquote qualified improvements. The idea being that if we're going to, if we're going to use town or state resources to, to, to subsidize a project, we want it to be a project that is going to be significant and meaningful in achieving the goals that we have for the, for the objective. So, so that's our first step. We're working to identify a person that could help us do that survey and, and quantify that cost. So, so that's, that's what we're working on right now. The second idea that we're working on is, is some sort of a revolving loan fund to, to help pay for those investments. Um, the reality is that some business owners don't have the money that's needed to um, necessarily pay for the investment or the improvement that might be needed. And so we're trying to figure out how we might create a revolving loan fund, either funded potentially by a grant from the EDC where you to decide that was appropriate or potentially private investors that would be used as a resource to help pay the business owner's portion of the repair or improvement and then be paid back over time. So um, there would be, it would be a revolving fund in that as the money was repaid, it would be available to be provided to other business owners. Again, the idea here is to focus our attention on those buildings that we think are significant for the downtown 
and sort of try to focus our investment on those repairs that we think have a disproportionate impact on the attractiveness of the facades as a, a visitor or a, or a resident sort of spends time in downtown. I think we're, we're recognizing what, what Joe had said earlier is that we're a tourist driven economy. We, we wanna have a, a town and a, and a environment that is attractive and appealing to visitors and residents alike. So, so that's where we're focused on with those two projects. The third project that we're focusing on, and there's a proposal, proposal that is attached, although I'm not asking for approval this evening necessarily, um, it's, it's what we're calling the Woodstock tree proposal. And what we're intending to do here is to create a, um, an inventory, a survey of all the trees that we have in the community and all in the downtown area and all, and, and, and in each of those cases, identify what work is needed on each tree. Is it a healthy tree? Does it need to be pruned? Is it a, is there a blank that's needed? Do we need to, to fill in the tree? Uh, for example, there's a number of spots on the main street that don't have trees. Should we, should we, you know, should we plant trees in that in that location? Uh, what work is needed to do that? Uh, what do you have to do to the soil? What do you have to do to the sidewalk? Um, and then take all of that data and prioritize the um, the work that's needed to be done. Realistically, it will be done over a number of years, whether that's three years or five years. But we will have a plan to um, to protect and enhance the the quality of the trees that we have throughout the town. Um, this is not intended to be a short term project. It's, it's a much longer term project, but we think there is value aesthetically and uh, to ensuring that we do this in a thoughtful and planned manner. The um, the total estimate that we had been we're thinking about is something along the order of $200,000. We say that without having yet done the survey, but from talking to, to people that know this sort of work, their estimate is that what we should be thinking about over a period of three years, four years, five years, six years is something like that. And realistically, you can't do the work all at once anyway, and you wanna prioritize the most important uh, investments first. But that's that's the way we're approaching this. Now, this was the proposal that we had come up with, which was to engage uh, Cy Benoit of Arborscape to do the initial study, uh, anywhere from $3,500 to $4,500 to create the study, which would help us inform us as to the work that's required in the plan. We have since learned that there may be some sort of, of study that's been done by the town of Woodstock. So before we approach you for this, we want to um, try to figure that out and figure out what was done and whether there's whether there's some existing work that's already been created. So perhaps we're we're not having we, we did not know that when we started this project, but this was this was recent information. So this is more of an of a an attempt to tell you what we're working on and what's coming, and we hope that by next month's mm -hmm. meeting, we'll be in a position to come to you uh, for that request. There's also um, some other specific tree projects that we might approach separately from this. Um, and we also hope would, we would have that. It would be part of the overall work that would be encompassed in this scope, but we might be able to, to jumpstart some work to, to, to do some obvious projects that are needed uh, in town. And, and we would approach you uh, at the end and at the next meeting uh, with that project as well. So Beth, I see you have your hand raised, but Joe, do you want to comment first and then? I, I don't have anything to add in that. He comes up pretty well. Okay, that's great. Uh, Beth? Um, I just wanted to, to say that I have uh, knowledge of the timber tenders, who is also, I mean, I love Cy Benoit. Please know he's wonderful. He did such a great job on um, Teagle's Landing. But... Uh, timber tender, who is also a, a tree arborist, who um, does volunteer work for a variety of things. He, um, Al Romero and his son Justin created a program and actually did a survey of all the trees in Woodstock in March. And... Um, we're asking to meet with Eric Duffy, who is our um, uh, town manager, but he they did a survey. It's all on a computer. The trees are numbered. They're 
the trees are numbered, they're labeled, they, you know, whether there's disease or anything, it's been done. Um, yeah, and that's our that's our understanding, Beth, and that's what we're trying to figure out exactly the scope of that. And, so and I would just I would um, actually just give a call to timber tenders at um, four five seven three seven eight nine Al Romero. Um, and yeah, we're, we're going to do that. Talk with him. Yeah, we agree. Okay. Thanks, Beth. That's great. Is there any, any, there have been just FYI, right? We have allocated $5,000 to replace three trees, which I think has not been used and it's not enough money to replace one, I think actually. So there is $5,000. It is enough to replace one. All right. So that was what I think what Stuart was talking about, about we might be able to do. So we, we have funding for that purpose. Um, a tiny small amount of funding so it's possible that we could make some small progress um without any further decisions on the edc but that's currently where this downtown revitalization and Stuart, were you here during the discussion of the dog park at the very beginning i i, I did i was okay good so you can see antonio's there it's something it's i the group can decide whether that's a priority or not but it's certainly um uh, an issue that's come up more than once over the years so um Okay. John, I have a comment. Yes, Roger, go ahead. Um, I'm and then Todd, I, sir. The the idea of of funding trees, I think, is a is a marvelous one. It's a true demonstrable public good. To pay private owners or to give private owners or or to help private owners use public funds to maintain their own business, I think is frankly ridiculous. If they can't maintain their business, they need to sell it and move on to doing something else. It's, it's, it's a bizarre kind of socialism that these guys, because they happen to have a building in the middle of Woodstock, get to neglect it. And I frankly think it's a, it's a, gro it's a horrible misuse of public funds. Yeah. to do that and I, I realize you haven't done it so i'm just i'm saying that i believe that this would be an absolutely wrong road to go down to subsidize a private business for not doing the work to keep their business up yeah this will be i, I this will be the i think the central debate that we will have and oh sure Roger, well, you're entirely correct i couldn't agree with you more the problem the property owner doesn't agree with you. And that's where the rub is. So you have a choice. You either say, okay, we can't do anything because the property owner doesn't want to do anything. And it's we can take your position and say it's wrong to invest public money into a private business. We can take that position and just let it sit there. Or we can try to do something about it. How how will we go about trying to do something about it? You know, they, we can talk about that. I, I'm hoping that we can have this debate. And I think what Stuart has proposed about this plan of buildings and getting input, uh, Stuart and I have talked about this, getting input from the design review board. And, and there's lots of places in town that could help us think about the buildings and what's important and what would have a real impact. Um, I'm hoping that we can have this debate, which we will definitely have. Mm -hmm around a specific set of possibilities and a specific set of numbers, yeah. not a philosophical debate, because right. both well, of these I, arguments I, are very I, strong I, on both sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, the I point is, you, let it go with that. either you or Rod, in your argument or Rogers is wrong. They're both unassailable. The problem is they're both contradictory. <laughs> so I, I hope I, that, well, no, I'm not I, I'm, I'm sorry. Not I'm just saying, yeah. well, we can do what, what he suggests. It's just not going to get us anything. The, the EDC has, over the last several years, been extraordinarily reluctant, very defensively so, in my opinion, yeah. to give money to private businesses to grow, to, to fund what they should be funding for themselves. I think right. that's been a very consistent theme of the EDC over the last several years. To say that, oh, these people are in our face, so we're going to change the rules for them, I think is is extraordinarily problematic. 
right? Roger, what I would you. say, Roger, what I would say that I agree, and this is a struggle that I've had and John has had. I think what we're trying to do is to design a program where very limited funding would be used to leverage a, a much more significant public good. So we're, we're not necessarily paying for it. And you're right, we are using some money, but <laughs> but hopefully, hopefully we will be able to convince you or hopefully we'll convince ourselves that the investment of a very limited amount of money in some way, shape or form is, is worth it under those difficult circumstances. We may not convince you, but that's what our goal is. Right. Todd, sorry, I, I apologize, Todd. You had your hand up for a while. Oh, no, you're muted, Todd. Okay, Todd. thanks. Nope. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I love it, Stuart, the tree stuff. The other stuff I, I struggle with, and I look forward to hearing more about it when something more concrete comes their way. But I'll tell you, there's nothing that I love more than going through a New England town any season and seeing Peggy Frazier will be happy for this nice sidewalks and trees. I mean, it just really like, just, you just want to stop there and take pictures. We'll probably get 50 Hallmark movies instead of one. If we had trees and, and some sidewalk and curb appeal improvement. So I, I just can't, I can't wait for that to happen. I can't wait for a proposal to get in front of us and, 